Do you like making things with your hands or look at products out there and want to modify them or change them thinking, man, if they only made it like this, it would be so much better. Maybe even going as far as to drawing and sketching out your ideas. Do you follow the latest trends and the newest cars that just came out and backpacks and shoes and all of the above? Well, my friend, you might be a product designer. Today, I want to talk a little bit about the profession and hopefully recruit some of you to the awesome career of industrial design. When I meet a fellow industrial designer, I normally ask them how they discovered this profession. That's because compared to, say, architecture or graphics design, it's not very well known. But on the flip side, what's funny is that almost every product that you buy on the market, on the shelves in the stores today, is probably designed by a product designer of some sort. I probably have to contribute this to the name industrial design because it leads people to think that we design factories of some sort. A product design is a little better name, but the best way I can describe what an industrial designer is, is to put it into some context. So say, if you had a broken arm, you would want to go seek a doctor. If your car broke down, you would want to go seek a mechanic. And if you had an idea for a product, you would want to seek an industrial designer. The biggest misconception about a product designer is probably that our goal is to make a product look nice and pretty. And although that might be true, there's just so much more when it comes to industrial design. And so in order to t understand this a little better, let's take a couple steps back and think what's even the purpose of making a product look nice and pretty. Well, we want to do the best for this product and we want to have it sell well on the market. And so you can probably see the benefits of making a product look nice is because we want it to appeal to as many people as it can. But at the same time, there's so much more that that can appeal to people than just looks and aesthetics. It could be usability, it could be price, it could be who's it for, is it for a baby, is it for a toddler, is it for a teenager, is it for an elderly person, is it for a man, woman, or dog, or cat? These are the things that an industrial designer needs to take in consideration. There's also things such as manufacturing processes, uh, materials, and how much is this all going to cost. These are the things that an industrial designer does every day. Ever since I can remember, all I wanted to do was look at and draw cars. I remember during elementary school, during like recess and lunch breaks, I would just be in the computer lab looking at cars on the internet trying to draw them. Or when I would go on road trips with my dad, I would always just look on the opposite side of the freeway just so that you can see so so many cars fly by and I could spot a Lamborghini or a Ferrari every once in a while just to say that I saw one. And ever since then I've always wanted to be a transportation designer. But then as I grew up and got older and started doing more research, I discovered industrial design. And I thought, you know what? Industrial design is kind of like car design, but for everything else. And I thought, man, that's way better. And so ever since then, it's been extremely rewarding. And you know what? If any of this that I'm saying appeals to you, or if you're anything like me, I highly recommend you look into industrial design. All right, guys. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or tell me about how you discovered industrial design, leave it in the comments down below. If you want me to talk about anything specific, also leave it in the comments below. Remember to subscribe so that my videos go directly to you. All right, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.